Welcome to Postscript. Here we hope to answer your questions and help you dig deeper into the messages and sermons at FaithBridge by talking with the teacher of the day. Hi, and welcome to Postscript. I'm Louie and Riley, Grow Group Director, and I'm here with Pastor Dan, who just brought us part two of Jesus the Prequel. Today we talked about legalism mm-hmm. and how Jesus came to fulfill the law. Right. And so we have a couple questions. First, we're going to talk a little bit about law versus grace, yeah. and then we're going to talk about how we can practically apply some of the things that you talked about today. Okay. So for the first question, um, I think about, um, I grew up in the church, Mm -hmm. and I know a lot of people look at Christians and see that we have a lot of rules that we live by, don't drink, don't smoke, whatever those rules are that you apply from the Bible. Right. Um, So then there's this idea of grace, Mm -hmm. where you freely give grace. How how do those balance? Is it just free to do whatever you want to do under grace, or can you speak to that? Sure. Um, uh, Before I speak to it, I would uh, encourage our listeners to uh, go to the book of Romans where Paul probably gives the most articulate response to that question anyone has ever given. But uh, borrowing from Paul, the whole notion of grace is not to the absolute exclusion of the law. Uh, Jesus said that the law is still in force. It's the means by which you choose to live out the law. If we live it according to our flesh, we are going to become judgmental and divisive and unloving, all of the sorts of things I talked about today. If, on the other hand, our lives are filled with grace, and it is the grace, the love of God, the relationship that we have with God through Jesus that empowers us then to live out the law, it's another matter entirely. It's not something that we are accomplishing. Uh, It's not something that we can be proud about or boast about. Certainly not anything that would cause us to differentiate ourselves from from someone else. Rather, it is a response to the love of God that's come into our lives. Does that make sense? Yeah. One of the things we talk about in Faith Bridge 101 is when you look at a disciple, we talk about a transformed heart Mm -hmm. and how it's not from the outside in but from the inside out That's right. that your life begins to change yeah. when you follow Jesus. That's it. Um, so I'm listening to this today and feeling convicted of areas where I believe that I've been guilty as well. And so how do I leave these walls and go out into the community and around my people um, and begin to live out a more graceful life? How do I do that? Well, I'll, I'll suggest two things. One. Uh, I I suggested in the message, I'll say it again, Um, go on a mission trip. Uh, That's a very practical, easy sort of thing to do. Why do I suggest that? Primarily because it forces a person to deal with individuals who are different Mm -hmm. than they are. Not just a different part of the world, or a different skin color, but often different in terms of socioeconomic status, uh, religious beliefs, those sorts of things. It can be a wonderful classroom to begin to realize that uh, there's nothing special about me. Mm. Um, That God loves all of us uh, regardless of where we live or what we believe, uh, those sorts of things. But beyond a, a mission trip in everyday life right here in Spring, Texas, I think there are uh, two key components. Time and communication. And the reason I lift those two up is because those are the two elements that are necessary for a healthy relationship. The only way to really know what someone else is like is to spend time with them and to talk with Mm -hmm. them, to sort of scratch the surface of what we think they probably are. Mm -hmm. When you start spending time with people, as Jesus did, all sorts of different people, you not only begin to see that they have value in and of themselves, completely apart from their circumstances, but uh, I think even more importantly, it begins to work a change inside of you because uh, time and communication work against 
the reflexive action we have toward judgment. It's a lot harder to judge somebody that you've talked to, really had a relationship with. Heard their story. Yeah, absolutely. From, what their life has been like. Yeah, yeah. You, you just never know the hurts, mm -hmm. the pain, the circumstance. I mean, behind every life, there, there's all sorts of stuff. And it's not until we're willing to get back and learn what some of those things are that I think we can begin to be set free from this sort of snap. Oh, mm -hmm. okay, well, you do that. Sorry. Um, so do like Jesus. Uh, get out with and begin to uh, form relationships with people who aren't like you mm -hmm. and discover the value that they have and the opportunity that you have to begin to extend grace to them as well. Great. Thank you. And thank you for your message today. Yeah. Um, thank you for joining us here for Postscript. We'll see you back here next week as we continue part three of Jesus the Prequel. Thanks for joining us for Postscript. Help us keep the podcast interactive by submitting your questions during the morning services. Learn more at faithbridge.org slash postscript.